All right, I don't know about you, but I am ready to start hitting the road here. Let's get started with Python. And the first thing that we need to do, well, we need to install Python itself. Uh, the Python download can be found at python.org. And we're going to download a package and walk through the wizard. I'll do this on both Windows, Mac OS, as well as Linux. So you can see it install on all three. They all largely work the same, but there are some unique properties for each platform. So depending on which platform you're using, you're going to need to follow slightly different installation instructions. Now, there's a few different things included in the package when we download and install Python. First of all, of course, our Python interpreter. Recall that we said in our previous video, you can't run Python code without a Python interpreter installed. Unlike a fully compiled executable, you need a Python interpreter that can actually read and understand the bytecode that gets delivered and then in turn execute that on the target machine. The target machine in this case is going to be our computer. So the Python interpreter is installed. There's also something known as an integrated development environment for Python called IDLE. This is a very simple IDE. I'm going to show it briefly in another video, but I don't think we're really going to use that much. Certainly, if you want to use IDLE, you're welcome to, but you don't need to worry too much about it. Just know that that's an environment where you can type Python code in, and it has some shortcuts and useful features and utilities that will help you write Python code. The Python installer also has something called pip, the package installer. This is how we install additional separate utilities that are not actually included in the Python 3 download. So there is a whole universe of libraries and updates and options and features and things that Python themselves have developed as well as the wider community. Uh, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of packages out there that you can download that do things for you. Pip is going to be the way that you get a hold of those packages and install them on your system so that you can use them inside of your Python code. We'll get the standard libraries installed as well. So aside from the pip package installer, there is a host of libraries that get shipped standard with Python and are installed with the Python software. Those will come. And then lastly, it is going to set up our file and path association. So that's a feature I'm going to talk about in a different video, but that's a really important thing to understand to set up in your Python installation. To begin with, I am going to open up python.org and come over here to downloads and I'm going to download Python. Well, the current version is 3.9.2. Uh, note that it cannot be used on Windows 7 or earlier. So if you are not on Windows, this should pop up with the appropriate platform for you, either Mac, Mac OS or Windows. I'll click download so I can download this file. And once it's complete, I will click it to execute it and go through the installation process. Now, you can just click this install now if you want. That will install with all the default features. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. The only thing I don't like here is where it chooses to install the software. It's buried down here instead of my user profile on Windows. I'm not a huge fan of that. I'm going to say customize installation. I'm going to leave everything the way it was except for this part right here. I'm going to change this to C colon backslash Python 3.9. This is going to install it inside of the Python 3.9 folder on my root C drive on my computer. And as I will show you in a minute, there's a lot. Uh, I'll also check install for all users. I think that'll be good. Click install. And this will install Python for me. Very simple and straightforward. Not a difficult thing to do on any of these platforms. It's pretty streamlined. The process It's fairly easy to do. That took a few minutes to complete. But once it's done, you get the setup was successful and Python is now installed on your machine. I will show you how to check that out in just a moment. Let's walk through this same process, however, on Macintosh OS. Here is my Mac OS desktop, and same thing, I'm at python.org. If I come over here to downloads, notice now it's download for Mac OS X. Click the link and let that download, and once it's done, I will select it in order to kick off my download. Now for Mac, I'm just going to click through all of the wizard options. I don't think there's anything that I'm really interested in changing, including the install location. Not something I need to update on my Macintosh system. I'm just going to let it install Python 3.9. Once again, this should just take a second or two. And there it is, it's complete. It's showing me the file. Notice there's the idle application, the IDE that we talked about, Python documentation, a launcher, a number of different things here. We're almost ready to get into it. Let's take one more quick look at how I do this in the Ubuntu software, Linux. Now, unfortunately, Linux is too rich and varied of an environment for us to really make a universal installer video. I'm gonna show off how you do it in Ubuntu using the apt software. This is a pretty common way to do things. So it may well work on the version of Linux, the distribution that you're using. If it doesn't, you're gonna have to hit your favorite search engine and look up how to install Python. It ought to be pretty straightforward, pretty simple. So from my terminal, I am going to call apt 
add repository to add a specific repository to my app it's going to be something known as the dead snakes which uh yeah is a funny name but that is where the python application is installed here and once that catalog is installed inside of my package library i can now call sudo apt install python 3.9 this will install python version 3.9 for me get this installed here once this is complete, I can verify at the terminal window that Python is installed. Let me show you how to do this quickly in my terminal here. Then I'll launch up my Windows terminal and show you a little bit about what we've done. So there, it appears to be complete. I'm going to call Python 3.9 dash dash version. And this is going to show me, yep, it responded with Python 3.9.2. I now have that installed. Let me open this up in Microsoft Windows and do something similar. So here I'm at a command prompt, a terminal window in Microsoft Windows. By the way, you can do the same kind of thing in Mac OS as well, if you're familiar with how to launch the terminal here. I'm just gonna call Python dash dash version and see what I get. I get 3.7.4. And the reason for that is because of the fact that I have multiple versions of Python installed and my path version currently points to version 3.4. If I go cd backslash Python 3.9 is where I installed it, right? Take a look at this directory. Yeah, there's python.exe. So now when I run Python, it's going to run this local version. I'll talk about paths in the different local versions in my next video. But Python dash dash version in here is now Python 3.9.2. So if I want to execute Python 3.9, presently I got to make sure I'm right here inside of this folder. I've got a lot of different versions of Python installed. Like I said, if I go back to um, 2.7, I think I have 2.7 installed here as well. So yeah, I could call Python dash dash version 2.7.17. So like I said, I've got a number of different versions of Python installed. You may only have the one, but if you have multiple versions, you need to make sure that you either change into the proper directory or that you set up your path variable the way I'm going to show off in my next video. But here, all I want to do is run Python without the dash dash version. This launches me into something known as the interactive terminal. You see those three little arrow brackets there? In the interactive terminal, I can just start typing Python commands and the Python interpreter will execute them as I type them, which is actually pretty cool. It's a neat way to test out quick little bits of code, which is exactly what we are going to do right here. If you've got Python installed, you have the correct version, you ran Python, you have these three little pips right here, you can do what I'm going to do, which is to say print, open parenthesis, quote, hello world, exclamation point, another quote, a close parenthesis and hit enter and you can see it just echoed right back to me hello world exclamation point okay yeah i get it that's uh that's not especially exciting but it is a traditional first program and that is absolutely a complete and functional python program print open paren quotes hello world quotes close paren that is a python program if you've done this if you've gotten this far you have written your first python program and we have written our first python program together in my next video, I'm going to talk a little bit more about configuring our environment and setting up the path, as well as the code editors that we want to use. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.